Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crack, it's crack, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. A shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. The last couple of days I've been playing around and trying the Japanese art of Yusegi where you take different species of wood and make a pattern block. From that block I can take shavings off and then use them as veneers. I reckon it's pretty cool, it's effective and the possibility of different patterns is huge. I did make a few errors along the way and from those I figured a few things out. I didn't glue this block up well enough with lots of weak joints. I salvaged some of the best pieces, but I'm going to start again and have another go at it. Hopefully I'll make some improvements and I'll show you how I go about it. I've picked out six different species of wood, camphor laurel, blackbird, cedar, black wattle, rosewood, and brush box. If you do have a go at this, then you need to pick out contrasting wood to get the best effect. I'm preparing all the wood that isn't already dressed by planing one face and one edge and then I take all the wood and rip them down on the table saw into 30 millimeter strips. I've made the video a scrap wood challenge as this is a great way to use scraps and along with my usual camphor laurel, I'm using some reclaimed floorboards and some cedar screening that I pulled out of a skip bin. I'm also making a box at the end of the video and I'll make that from camphor laurel. Now I need to rip them down into thin strips and to do that, I'll use my thin strip ripping jig on the table saw it's a safer way of cutting them with a thin strip on the outside of the blade so it can't get pinched between the blade and the fence. Most patterns in Yusegi require extremely precise pieces. I've decided to make a random pattern like this as it's pretty easy and it doesn't need that same precision. Also I should point out that the final pattern is face grain and not end grain like it may appear and again the random pattern is very easy because the strips are already face grain along the strip. I've got three different thicknesses, I didn't measure them but these are around 2mm, these ones are 4mm and these ones are 6.5mm. So I didn't count them either but there's about 8 or 9 of each one. And I've still got all these ones left here and I'll use this to make some random thicknesses. Some of them I can use just as they are like this one here, that one's ready to go. This one, it just needs the varnish taken off so I'll put that through the table saw and clean it up and just a few different sizes will make the whole thing a bit more random and a bit more interesting. I'm arranging them here into a random and pleasing order. I'm just moving them around till I think it looks right. If you have a drum sander, then you could run them through that, but mine came out very clean straight off the saw and I think the surfaces are plenty good enough to glue together. I glued the first block up with Type Bond Original and as I wasn't fast enough applying the glue, it was starting to go off before I got them all into the clamps. This time I'm using Type Bond 2 which gives me a little more time and I'm also working faster as well and I'm rolling an even coat of glue on each side of the strips. I found out about Yusegi a year or so ago from a recommended YouTube video. There wasn't any instruction, it was just watching a Japanese craftsman go about his work. I couldn't find any instruction anywhere, so what I'm doing may not be 100% correct, but I think it's pretty close to what I observed. <laughs> I flattened it by hand as it's too wide for the jointer. I could have put it through the thicknesser on a sled, but it only takes a couple of minutes with a hand play. Now that's cut off at 30 degrees, I can use that face along the fence on the table saw push that through and take off thin strips across the original strips and to do that I made a simple push block, I used this on the original block and the fence at the back was made of plywood and the end did break off so I glued a bit of hardwood on there to push the stick through and that worked really well. I did make a mistake here though when I cut the 30 degree 
off the block here. I should have done it this way. I can flip it over. Now that's not stable, so I'll just quickly put that through the thicknesser and I'll be good to go. You could keep going and take strips off the waste blocks, but I've got enough strips here, so I'll put those aside and I'll use them for something else another day. They're pretty cool. I'm sure they'll come in handy for something. I've laid them out how I'm going to glue them up. I'm going to make one long main block, and that's as wide as the, uh, the blade is on my plane comfortably. Uh, they're 10 wide. I've got a smaller block that's... Um, eight wide and then four wide and two wide at the moment they don't look very random but what i need to do is i need to take every other one i need to flip it around and then i also need to flip it over and that will start looking a lot better but when we come to glue them up we'll stagger them as well and it should look pretty good so every other one flip it around flip it over To help me glue and clamp them up, I've just put some packing tape on this piece of plywood. I've added a fence, that's just a couple of strips of plywood as well. And now I can clamp that against that fence and we should get it nice and solid and keep it straight. I'm going to dry fit it and I'll show you why. I'll put the first strip on and then I'll put the next strip on and I'm going to overhang it, the one end, to offset it. And then with that, I'll mark that off and I'll cut that piece off there and I'll add it to this end here. I'll go through and do all of those. The two clamps are just holding the strips together without any pressure and that's to let me push all the ends of the pieces together and close up any gaps. I'm doing that by pushing the ends of each row together using paddle pop sticks and I'm using those because they were the first thing I found and they're pushing together easy which means the glue is still wet and hasn't started setting yet. I'm planing one side flat and that will be the underneath. I then trim the two ends and then the block gets glued to a piece of plywood and the reason for that is we can keep taking shavings off the block all the way down even when it's very thin. I'm also gluing a waste block to either end and that's to support the ends of the Yusegi when I'm taking the shavings. While the glue's setting up on that one, I glue together the three smaller blocks.
even though there was a big improvement in the glue up, I reckon this block is worse than the first one and I couldn't get a decent shaving. It's probably down to the different wood I used, even though I chose them, expecting them to be better. Also, I didn't check carefully enough and my Japanese plane is barely wider than the block, so that's not really going to work. I tried my Stanley number no. 7 as that has a wider blade and that did a better job than I expected. It still wasn't good enough though, so then I tried the number no. 7 on the original block and that wasn't too bad at all and it looked promising. The failures seem to be mainly along the edge and that's why I glued strips to the original block and that worked well so I decided to try that out on one of the smaller blocks that I just made. It worked great and I also tried my low angle block plane which worked amazingly well too. Maybe a low angle plane is the way to go but I only have the low angle block plane and that will only be wide enough to do the narrow strips. The only way to get any decent sort of shavings is to have a super sharp blade in your plane. I'm sharpening my blades to 6000 grit and I think you'll need to do at least that, even higher would be better. I glued strips to the outside of all the blocks and I decided this one was too long so I cut it into two. Let's give it another go and fingers crossed it will work better this time and by the way I'm wiping it with a damp cloth and that will help to keep the fibres together. That really is an improvement and most of that strip is usable. If there are a couple of bits sticking up but the pieces are still there, the iron does a pretty good job of flattening those back down. The only real bit it failed on was the outside strip. I tried to pick pieces with the grain running in the right direction but the grain on camphor laurel can run all over the place and there's a small section there where the grain's running in the wrong direction. I could cut that strip off on the table saw and replace it easy enough though. Obviously a Japanese plane is the traditional way to make the shavings. I only have this homemade one even though I reckon it performs fantastic and I can get some pretty good results here. As I said earlier though I reckon the low angle block plane gets even better results so I've ordered a low angle bench plane which I've been thinking about getting anyway. Now that your sagi blocks are finished and ready to go, I'll make a simple box and I'll veneer it with the shavings. I'm preparing some stock for the sides of the box from camphor laurel scraps, pretty much like I do in my scrap wood challenges. It's been a while since I last used my mitre guillotine, so I thought I should blow the cobwebs off and give it a go. For the top and bottom I'm using a piece of 3mm plywood and carefully pushing that into position. I've got enough pieces now to start veneering, I just need to make some thin edging strips before I get going. I've never really veneered before and I'm going about this with just regular items I already have like normal masking tape and PVA glue. I don't have a piece wide enough for the top but this pattern is easy enough to join two pieces together.
I left the veneers for 15 minutes to set up before moving on to the next side and they seemed nice and solid and that seemed to be a good amount of time. I reckon experimenting with different species of wood is the way to get better results. So I've glued up another block. I've got rid of some of the problem wood. The cedar was just tearing up and the rosewood isn't the best. So I've used that again, but limited and I've added some pine in too. And I think that's the best block yet, but I'll keep working on it and I'll experiment a bit more. On the first blocks, I cut all the angles at 30 degrees. On this one, I tried it at 35 degrees and maybe I should have even gone to 45. And the idea of that is when you push the plane through, it's almost like the plane is being skewed because the pieces are on an angle. So more of an angle, then it's more of a skew and that makes it easier to plane. I'm using water-based matte varnish for the finish and I gave it around six coats, sanding between them to 400 grit for a nice smooth finish. I need to line the inside of the box and to do that I've just cut this thin strip of black wattle off camera. I first cut all the pieces slightly oversized and then I trim them to fit. I do that by pushing the piece up to the blade, retract the blade and then move the piece slightly to take off just the slither. You say it doesn't have to be plain shavings. You can take slices off the block with a table saw or band saw. You won't get as much out of the block, but if you're struggling to take a good shaving, then that's an option. I reckon the box turned out great. There's definitely room for improvement and I'll probably make a few more so I'll get a bit more practice. I also turned this small bowl out of one of the waste blocks and I made my door to this small pendant. Also, I made a bookmark by gluing one of the Yusagi strips to a piece of veneer. If there's enough interest, I may make a few of the bookmarks and make them available through my website. And while I'm talking about websites, the recent relaunch of my Past Makes website went so well using Squarespace that I've decided to transfer my photography website over to Squarespace 2, which I'm in the process of. Squarespace is a powerful online platform to create your website straight from your browser. It's perfect for any artist, maker or craftsman to share their creativity. 
And the best bit is anyone can make a professional looking website as there's no coding required. And there's heaps of templates to get you started. Also, every design automatically includes a unique mobile experience that matches the overall style of your website. So your content looks great on every device, every time. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash paskmakes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. That really was a fun project. It took a bit of figuring out and I reckon it looks awesome. I'll definitely be having a crack at some more challenging patterns, especially if that's something you'd like to see. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.